my name is Brittany. I'm a recent graduate from the University of British Columbia's Doctor of Pharmacy program. And I uh, wanted to share what I learned in the process of preparing for these exams, how they went, and what kind of tools I used to make sure that I was successful. Of course, all of this information, it, you can take it or leave it. This is personal opinion. But I think it was helpful for me, so probably will be helpful for someone else out there. So let's get into it. So one of the biggest questions I had going into my fourth year and knowing I was going to be taking the Canadian Pharmacy Licensing Exams was wondering how long I needed to study before the exams to be prepared and, be, and feel like very confident going into them. So I wanted to know if there was like a sweet spot because I didn't want to study too early and then forget things and it be not productive and almost like a waste of time. And I didn't want to study too late and be like, oh crap, I don't feel prepared because that's the last thing I wanted. I wanted to know what the sweet spot was of how long should I study before. And for myself, I found that to be three months, okay? So three months of basically like full-time studying. And I know this is not practical for everyone. I was very fortunate to be able to do this. But for me, three months worked really well. And it was a combination of my last practicum through the pharmacy program. I had a two-month practicum. And then I had about a month when I was just living back at home studying full-time basically from my apartment. Now when I was on practicum, I was going into a community pharmacy and working about eight hours a day and then I'd come home and throughout the evening at some point I would do another two hours of studying something like PharmaChief, which I'll talk about a little bit later. The other great piece of information that I got from other pharmacists I worked with on practicums and recent grads was buy PharmaChieve. Buy PharmaChieve, the study program, great advice, I'm passing it on to you guys. If you are going to take the Canadian licensing exams, this is the best study program there is out there. The reason it's so good is just that it puts all the information from your CTC, your guidelines, and it combines it into one spot and condenses it into PowerPoints that have the key information that you need. So you don't need all the little tiny details. You need to be studying bulk, right? There's so much information on this exam. So PharmaChief will say highest priority study groups. You know, these PowerPoints you need to study it for sure, even though they're low priority. So basing your studying off of the priority list in PharmaChief is awesome. And then also having the condensed notes from them is really good. PharmaChief has guideline based information within their PowerPoint presentations. So I felt pretty comfortable that all the guideline information was put into those PowerPoints. But I did want to go back and go over cardiovascular conditions and diabetes because I thought they'd be a big portion of the exam. I went through the Canadian Cardiovascular Guidelines, all their pocketbooks, you know, AFib, heart failure, antiplatelet therapy, and dyslipidemia. And then I also went through Diabetes Canada's Guidelines. And I think this was helpful for the exam, so I would recommend if you're gonna go through any guidelines, those are the ones to go through. So my tip for the PharmaChieve question bank is study a topic, go through the PowerPoints, watch the lecture videos, and then wait one week or two weeks before actually doing all the, the questions related to that section. Now I would say do that because it's more reflective of what you would actually get on a test because there's so many topics that you're going to be studying that you're not going to have questions all that you just studied the day before on your exam. So you're going to get all those questions right because you have it fresh in your mind. So study section, go through the PowerPoints, take your notes, watch the videos, then wait a week or wait two weeks even and then do the question mix. So that means you have to be on like a rotating schedule because you, you don't want to take all the questions right away. 
So keep an Excel spreadsheet, remember which ones, which uh, topics you've gone through, and then circle back, circle back to do those questions. I promise you, this is so much better for studying, it's way more effective, because when you go back and you get questions wrong, then you know where you're gonna be weak on the exam, so you can go back and study those topics again, refresh, find better ways to memorize the information, or um, consolidate it, and you're gonna do better overall. Now my tips for staying on task and studying, because it is a lot of studying. I was getting very tired and I needed some motivation, but what I would do is when I was studying at home, I would either put on some white noise from YouTube, there's a white noise channel, and whoever came up with that idea is genius, they just pulling out a bunch of money, putting white noise on YouTube, but it is really helpful for staying focused and studying. There's also a bunch of study with me videos that I actually quite enjoy because sometimes they'll even time, you know, 45 minutes on, 15 minutes off, take a break. So I, I actually like studying with those study with me videos as well. And then my OG thing I would listen to when studying is lo-fi beats on YouTube and I listen to that all through my undergrad and I've listened to it for countless hours but just something about the music, it just helps me stay focused and on task. I also used an app called Forest. I used this a bit during pharmacy school as well, but it's an app on your phone that when you are studying, you put in say 15 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, and you're not allowed to open your phone and use it for any reason. So you're growing a tree during the time that you're not using your phone. This is the concept of the app. And you have a forest. So when you don't touch your phone for 45 minutes, say, you grow a nice tree and it adds to your forest. Now if you open your phone, and you, then your tree will die and you'll have a dead tree in your forest. So at the end of the week, end of the month, end of the year, you can see your cumulative forest, which is all your focus time without your phone. And it's, it's actually super motivating because you don't want a dead tree in your forest. Anyways, work for me. Hey guys, I hope this video was helpful. If you still have some questions regarding the PVC exams, leave them in the comments below. Good luck.